I don't know if you could tell or not, but I'm in front of the White House, and it, it's actually it's the day before Easter. And this past week, what was going on in the White House is that Obama announced a half a billion dollars for apprenticeship programs. That's right, for people all over America to take advantage of apprenticeship programs. And the reason he did this is that it showed 86% of the people, actually it's 87%, of the people who you know, uh, participate in apprenticeship programs get out of it by getting a job worth at least $50,000. That's right, so you could get a job at least $50,000. And this is really to uh, compete in the world and get better better jobs for people out there instead of just <laughs> making coffee or whatever you're doing, or, or a typical retail job. It's skilled jobs that will give you, you know, higher wages, and actually the training that's available to get those skilled jobs. And actually, it's part of what's called the Trade Adjustment Community College and Career Training Act. <laughs> that's a lot of words. But if you Google White House Job Training Investments, just Google White House job training investments and you'll find out about it you know and actually what the 600 million dollars is going to go towards you know getting skills in like machinery manufacturing industrial maintenance IT operations automotive repair healthcare training and even the building trades there's good jobs out there making good money but people need the training and it takes some time so apprenticeship is really where to do it because a lot of you get paid by being an apprentice and learning you know and the Bureau of Labor Statistics estimates over the next 10 years, we're going to need at least a half a million new IT people, over a hundred thousand dollar, a hundred thousand pharmacists, you know, and over almost a million welders, electrical power, line inst installers. So there's all kinds of careers going on out there that pay decent wages. You just have to get the training. And it, there, this money is going in cooperation with companies, nonprofits, and even unions, because a lot of these people are either people who want the jobs or have the training facilities. And it's run a lot of it through the local community colleges. Okay, how do you find out about it? Okay, if you went online and, and got the release, you know, if at the White House job training Training investments. If you Google that, you could find out some about it, or you could go to the careeronestop.org and you could put in your zip code and you could find out about the programs that way. Or go to votesmart.org and contact your congressman. Again, put in your zip code, give me the name, address, and phone number of your congressman, and they'll find out for you too, because they're in the business to do that. They're the ones that create the money for these programs. So <laughs> they want to help you take advantage of it, okay? So there's jobs out there. It just takes training, it takes effort, and you got to find out about it. Well, you've heard of the Better Business Bureau, right? <laughs> and they do some good work, but I think there's a lot of bad about them. So you gotta be careful and use them in the right way. Now look at this headline they came out with. Better Business Bureau alerts consumers to Grants Now USA. Now, I don't know Grants Now USA. It sounds like they're <laughs> business like mine, but they're treating customers badly, you know, and they charge outrageous fees and they don't answer the phone calls and they got a lot of complaints. Now, that's, you know, that's probably often very true, you know, and that's not the issue. But when you read their release, what they say about them, you know, is that, okay, now this is for the Better Business Bureau talking. They say, it's important to remember that most sources of grant money don't give grants to individuals to meet personal needs. Grants usually are given to, sever, to, <laughs> to serve a social good, such as bringing jobs to an area, training underemployed youth, preserving history, funding soup kitchens, or art museums, or researching medical issues. Now that's true too, but <laughs> it's not true that grants don't go to serve personal needs. And see, this is the problem. And I, and I called them years ago complaining about this because they give me a bad rating because of this, you know, and I, I, just, I told them they're wrong and they had to change my rating. Uh, but it, 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 see, if they call the government and ask for grants, that's the description they'll get. But unfortunately, free money from the government isn't all called grants. So they're saying you could you can't get it for personal needs? Nonsense. You could get it like there's grants that are given out, or if you want to call them grants or whatever, uh, $1,500 to pay your mortgage. You know, 
So isn't that a personal need? Or a couple hundred dollars to pay utility bills or, or, or your phone bill and things like that. Now, isn't that personal need? Or your prescription drugs, isn't that personal need? Or they say it, it's, uh, uh, what else they say? For the social good. Well, I don't know the social good. I mean, they say it only goes like to underemployed. Man, if you're a doctor, you could get $8,000 to learn a new procedure. If you're professional, you could, if you want to learn to be a massage therapist, you get $10,000 to do that. See, uh, they just don't know. We can see a lot of the government, 80% of the free money that's given out by the government is not called grants. So they're to be perpetuating this myth <laughs> about you know, money from the government. And so you'll read that and say, oh, Better Business Bureau, oh, they must know everything and they're right. So I won't look now, nonsense, whether you use me or and don't use these people, they're trying to get bad. Because see, what the Better Business Bureau does do, well, I think is if you have a problem with a company, now the, what, what to do with this, Anybody you're going to do business with, it's good to check the Better Business Bureau, not on their rating if they give you an A, a B, a C, or D, because who cares? I've seen them give A's to people who were investigated by the Federal Trade Commission, right? Because they're a member. The Better Business Bureau could act like the mafia. You know, join me and I'll give you a good rating. I mean, they don't say that, but it's implied, and they'll, you know, they'll get fa more favorable ratings. That's why I never joined the Better Business Bureau. It's all, oh, your windows are going to be broken, you know, if you don't join. Nonsense. I'll treat my customers right. That's why with the Better Business Bureau, I have zero unsatisfied complaints. You complain about me, I screw up and I deserve to be complained about. <laughs> but I will solve your problem to your satisfaction. That's why you look at my record of the Better Business Bureau. I have a better record than Bill Gates, Microsoft, because I have zero unsatisfied complaints. So that's how to use the Better Business Bureau. Find out about somebody and what their complaint record. Do they solve every complaint? Because they it's see, I mean, they'll get you, you check off a uh, you know, you buy something, and there's 15 paragraphs of if, ands, or buts, and you have to agree to that, and you'll never read it. So, they by law, they're right, but they're not treating customers right because they have some little if, and oh no, you don't pay your money because your eyes are green, or something like that. <laughs> we well, give you money back no matter what, so we'll satisfy you even if you're wrong because that's the way you should pe treat people in this life. Yeah. Uh, and businesses get away with even doing that and they get a good rating because they comply with some contract you didn't even know you signed or whatever. And that's nonsense. You know, we all want a square deal. So that's why the Better Business Bureau has good stuff, but learn how to use it because they're bad stuff too. You know, and they don't know everything and they, they have power by giving ratings like this. You know. So when you want to use them, look at the un unsatisfied complaints. You're going to deal with somebody, go to the Better Business Bureau, look at, don't look at the rating, it doesn't matter. It, 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 what matters is everybody who complains got satisfied on their side. In other words, not according to the business and they wrote some, you know, read back some paragraph that you signed you didn't know. No, that they solved your question because you thought it was right. So whatever you think is right, you get that satisfaction. And that's what you should do in dealing with people. I don't know if you saw this guy in the news, but his business got a million dollar grant from the government. A million dollars! That's right. Actually, it's from a program that's been around a long time called SBIR, Small Business Innovative Research Grants. And they go to thousands of companies all around the country, and, and half of them go to businesses like less than 25 people. And, and uh, like his business, you know, he, he figured out a way to, to uh, set up a solar, you know, power plant, you know, with a machine instead of people, you know, it was like 20 times faster and you don't need people to do it. The machines put in all the solar panels or, or a woman I interviewed who got a million dollars and she had like a home based business where she figured out how to take the sting out of getting a shot when you go to the doctor. I actually even bought one. They're like 35 bucks. My kid was like 30 years old, big hungry guy. He's still afraid of shot, shots when he goes to the doctor. So they're for all kinds of things, but there's a, uh, website, if you want to know about these things, your business, looking for new ideas to help other people with them, go to sbir.gov. 
sbir.gov. Okay, tell you all about the program there. There's about $2 billion given out every year, and it's in about 10, 11 agencies, so they're all different. Could be healthcare, could be defense, it could be energy, all this kind of stuff. And it is was for energy. So if you have a bright idea for something, you know, or the National Science Foundation gives them out too, like even for research, you want to work on, 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 on projects. And what's also interesting, because these are complicated applications you got to fill out, there's free help to help you uh, fill out these applications. And and they're at your small business development centers in your state. So you can now even go to uh, ASBDC, American Society of Business Development Centers dash US dot org. So that's ASBDC dash US dot org. And find there's a map there and you could plug in your zip code or whatever, it'll show you your local office. That will help you you know, figure out this system for free. So when you go to the sbir.gov, that may be a little complicated, but if you go to your local business development center, they want you to get a grant. You know, They, they wanna help you, you know, your small business to do this because then you're gonna create jobs, right? So if they kick in some money to help you do all this thing, then everybody's happy. You, them, the politicians who get reelected, and everybody. Well, the internet has been a big thing in our society, right? So in the last 15, 20 years, it really revolutionized almost everything that's going on in our world. And then came crowdfunding or crowdsourcing and getting free money on the internet. Now that's just in the beginning stages, and that's about to have a big change in our society for ways of getting money. Now there's a third idea too that I think is really changing, and it's, yeah, well, it's changing the world, really. <laughs> that's ideas are changing because it's here already. But very few people are taking advantage of it, and that's 3D printing. And man, if you don't have a 3D printer now, you will soon, <laughs> or you're going to be used someone else's soon. And I'm going to show you an interview with a fellow who lets you use other people's 3D printers. Now, what's a 3D printer? I make stuff. I can make this. I can make your vase like this. You know, I just noticed on our stove, we have a knob that's screwed up on the a stove. So, we didn't get a new one. Instead of going to the manufacturer, I could print it out on a 3D printer for like a dollar, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. You know, fifty dollars is a lot of money. And you can make it instantly. And what's happening to make those kind of products or whatever, um, and I just thought of something. Somebody then went, you can even make shoes. That's right. So I could go, oh, I need orange shoes to go to this office outfit. You know, I can generate my 3D printer and print myself a pair of orange shoes for tonight. Now, how cool is that? So that's what's happening. But now, see, a lot of people, and they're only like a thousand bucks or so, 1200 bucks to get them. And, and you could make money with a 3D printer because other people want things printed. And if you get one of these things and learn how to do it, then there's a website that people could go on and say, hey, I need orange shoes, or hey, I need this little gadget, or uh, hi, I, I need a, uh, a new you know, sofa for my kid's dollhouse or something like this, or a part for my machine to run my lawnmower or whatever it is. All these kinds of things you'll be able to make with a 3D printer instantly. And this is a collection, this interview you're gonna have, of, of people who have 3D printers, it's a platform, and in other words, a website. You put in your zip code and you find out who in your neighborhood has 3D printers that are willing to print things for you. That's right. And there's other people say you don't know how to do the graphics or, or how to print. There's other people to do that. So for like a hundred bucks, you get it all done. You don't even have to know how to spell 3D printer <laughs> and to get these kinds of things done. And that's right. It is, you know, all our manufacturing is going in China now because that's mass production. I think what's happening now in our society, mass production is over. You know, we all want unusual things. So producing a couple hundred, a couple thousand or whatever, you're not going to send it to China for that. You know, you want to do it here. And the cheapest, easiest way to do it here is with 3D printers. There's a guy I interviewed, you may have seen this interview, who, who has wine glass holders for your bathtub. <laughs> and what he does, he's going to this site that you're going to interview to have them all made. He's selling them on the internet and charging $15, $20. And he's saying, hey, anybody with the 3D printer could make one. I'll, I'll give you five, six, seven bucks or whatever it is. They're making money on it. He's getting it made, you know, right in his own neighborhood. See, you could find it in your neighborhood 
and get this made in your neighborhood and walk across the street and get it or get in your car and go down the block or whatever it is to get it instead of waiting for Amazon to deliver things. See, it's really revolutionizing so much in our country and it's something you gotta watch. Maybe you're not gonna, you don't see an application for it now, but more and more applications will be there where you could use this thing. So this is a clearing house. Somebody's on the ground floor of organizing all the 3D printers. You put in your zip code and you find out who will sell you their time. And it's very cheap. It's like, you know, Kinko's copying something because you don't have a photocopy. Well, now there's a guy down the street who'll make it for you because you don't have your own 3D printer. So watch this. Well, Nathan Toad, yeah. <laughs> and you're the co-founder of Make XYZ, and you're going to get all the manufacturing that we send to China back here in the USA. <laughs> and we're going to become the national power or the international powerhouse for making stuff. And it's all because of 3D printers, right? <laughs> so I, how do people use you? What, what, what can we do to get involved in this stuff? Well, first, I think I should have you... Um be my sales guy from now on. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true. I mean, it's just, we, we, we have to manufacture. That's what's gonna create economic development. There's only so much bullshit we can sell each other on Wall Street. You know? <laughs> we gotta start making something real. You know? And 3D printers puts that manufacturing down into the average place. Like I, I, I was interviewing the way I found you was, was through someone who raised, you know, I, I forgot, twenty, thirty thousand dollars to make wine glass holders for a shower room. And he says he's using you to manufacture it. He's not going to China. No, because he has a 3D printer. He's making them in his kitchen. He can't make them all. So he goes to your website and you got people in his neighborhood or around the world that are doing his production for him at a fraction of the cost too. Right. <laughs> so I, yeah, I think that that's a really, really great story because our goal at Make XYZ is to help people make things, whether that be something you're making at home or something that you're selling to the end consumer. Uh, and the shower caddy is a really good example of that. It's something unique and interesting that anyone anyone that people didn't realize they want but now they want yeah and um, um we we help well we, we're helping him make that <laughs> but it, it, it's so many ways i mean i could be sitting here at home but and one thing is that you're sort of like uh people know b uh, <laughs> airbnb by the way i heard of another one for the um in uh, new orleans through the, when mardi gras they had air p and p and it was a place, an app, where if you had to go to the bathroom, because all the public bathrooms were, <laughs> you put your how, the bathroom in your house, you, you get 10 bucks for people coming to, uh, anyway. Uh, so, but you go on your site, if I want, let me see, I could be at home and I want a little doll mm -hmm. thing for my kid's dollhouse. You know, and I could go on your site, put in my zip code, so I know some guy down the street then will pop up who makes these things, it could make it, I mean, it costs hardly nothing to make it, or what, five, 10 bucks or something like that on, on mm -hmm. the printer. And then, uh, then someone else could help you design the thing if you don't know anything about it. <laughs> and you could literally walk down the street and get this <laughs> magic little toy for your kid. Right, right. right. <laughs> Right. Wow. So we, have, we have thousands of different 3D printers signed up in 65 different countries. and we How many between, thousand again? Uh, How we have many printers? 3D printers signed up uh -huh. in 65 plus different countries. Wow, 65. And uh, just, just like you said, that was actually the reason that we, we started Make XYZ is uh, we were doing a 3D printing project ourselves, and it was a light switch cover with a hook on the bottom so you could uh -huh. walk in the door, leave your keys on the hook, and, uh, and uh, never forget your keys. But our 3D printer was down at the time, so we had to sh mm. sh ship our part to a, a centralized factory, and it took a long time to get. When there was, like you said, certainly someone down the block with a 3D printer, we just didn't know who they were. Uh, so we decided to tackle that from, from the software side, and out of that frustration came Make XYZ. <laughs> well, actually, I mean, you, you're, you're creating quite a stir already. I mean, you, you got some big fat cap venture capitalists putting money into you now because they really see this. And these are people who are always looking for the next hot thing. So they're not wasting their money, that's for sure. And, and, and it just makes so much sense. But also, I think your place is a great place for people who are thinking about PhD. Okay, I'm a guy sort of like make things. I don't know anything about... 
uh, 3D printers, but they're only like 1300 bucks now. You get one and you're a place I could go and get back the money I invested in this thing right. by just put registering for free, right, right. on your website. Because I, I went and I put my zip code in there. Man, I got dozens and dozens and dozens of people within you know, my scooter distance. I drive a scooter <laughs> that, that, that I could pick up stuff for. And you don't right. even know, have to know the software stuff because you have people on your site that could help you figure that out if mm -hmm. you don't know any mm -hmm. of that. Right. So, so you can make use make XYZ in a couple of different ways. If you have a, a 3D file that's ready to be printed, you can go on to make XYZ and find someone quickly to print that for you. Oftentimes, if you submit your order in the morning, you can get it that afternoon. Wow, also, Amazon's going to love that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So also, if, if, you have, if you don't know how to do 3D design or you don't really know where to get started, you can show up and make XYZ with an idea. It's just, mm. hey, you know, I'm really interested in getting this uh, uh, iPhone case designed. I have this idea, but I have no idea where to start. Our community of makers on Make XYZ is there to help you. Do and that do you out. have a sense of, okay, let's take that I iPad holder or something like iPhone holder, and you want to, you know, something jazzy you want to do on that. So what average is that tens of dollars, hundreds of dollars, thousands, tens of thousands of dollars just to help design something like that? Uh, so, I mean, it's going to depend on the complexity. Yeah. If, you're, if you're designing something with moving parts and many different parts, mm -hmm. it could be, you know, $100 or $200. If it's something oh. simple like an iPhone stand, you know, maybe it might take someone an hour to do, so $20. $20. Wow. So, oh, so, well, you, you, both those prices are very, very reasonable <laughs> compared to the technology, you know. I mean, so, I mean, so for $200, I, I could get something designed and, and for less than maybe fifty dollars I could have it made and <laughs> have yeah. one of a kind and then see and then put it on the internet and see if anyone will buy this sucker, right? And if people say, yeah, this looks cool, then you'll get a uh, hundred of these people doing this every day for you. Right. God, whoa. I mean, isn't that terrific? See, my dad was in the garment business. You know, he had a big factory and, and sewing machines and all this kind of stuff. You know, in the new age like this, wow, you make one sample. So this is the way to do it. You have an idea for a product. You go on, you know, uh, make XYZ and make your one sample. Go on a crowdfunding site to see if anybody buy this stuff. And so you invest a maximum couple hundred bucks and mm -hmm. maybe you get a couple million. <laughs> right. And the worst that, case is you lose that, a couple hundred. That's what's been really uh, interesting to us is it's make XYZ has been a really good window on the ways that people are being yeah. creative. It's people who otherwise had this idea but never would have acted on it and yeah. instead are they're designing this iPhone case and then they're using make XYZ to easily prototype it and iterate through the different versions. And then once they're ready to sell it, using Make XYZ to, to be their production uh, arm. Yeah. Uh, and so that that's it's been really yeah. great to see what people are making and also to, to help people make this stuff. But more importantly, I think that now it's sort of like literature and everything that is so segment. You know, I mean, a small segment market. I mean, we used to only have three networks, right? Now we have umpteen thousand. So the whole market of books, you know, we only printed so many, but now we have hundreds of thousands or whatever. So I think the same with products. Instead of making mass producing 10 million, I mean, you know, we only need a 3,000 and that's a big enough market for a small guy who wanna sell something, yeah? Right. And so this is the way to do it locally instead of trying to get 3,000 made in Japan <laughs> or China, <laughs> or Japan, that's old, old school, yeah. Uh, but China, that, and this is the growth of our country, I think, right here, making individual products like that domestically for niche markets or whatever, and you're supplying the factory. Everyone has a factory of 3,000 machines, you know, to make stuff for them through makexyz.com. <laughs> With no overhead, no management, no nothing problem. <laughs> Just a guy in his t-shirt down in Austin, Texas. Well, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you to do our commercials for us. <laughs> well, it's wonderful, though. I mean, I, I really am seriously enthusiastic. I, I would be that way if it wasn't. It's important. I think development is important. Doing something new because the, the, the world is changing so quickly, and most of us in this country have no fucking idea what's going on. <laughs> so, and it's young, bright people like you that do. You see the future, and that's why we have to hang on the coattails of people like you who are going to drag us there, whether you want it or not. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> because it's because it's happening. <laughs> and you're taking us there, Nathan. Thank you so much for being there. And people that get involved, get on one of these machines, and then you'll make money forever. You can quit your job when you have a maker machine, a 3D <laughs> printer. And the place to do that, make xyz.com. Great name. Thanks for having me. Okay, you bet. Take care. Okay, you're going to get one? They're cheap. <laughs> and they're going to get cheaper like everything else you know, in our society that goes. They become better, faster, cheaper, whatever, as we produce more of those. So that's a, another hot new idea, and it's going to be there. My God, I'm looking at glasses. I think this is now, well, good glasses I could do. <laughs> I already have 12 pairs upstairs. I don't know if my wife will let me have any more. You know, the government has a grant for inventors. It's called the Small Business Innovative Research Grant. You know, and, and it's at about a half a dozen or so agencies, and they'll give you grant money that you don't have to pay back to work on a great idea. Okay, and you get like a half a million dollars, and sometimes up to a million dollars, but the first phase is usually like a half a million dollars. And people around the country compete for these. Now, the, the people who get it <clears throat> usually you know, like 20 to 25 percent of the people who apply get it. And the, the application, again, you know, this is a government application for free money. That it's, it's a little complicated because it's a competitive application. So what states do, state governments, give you a grant money to help you fill out the application because it's that complicated sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> and that's not just personal grants. This is for you know, a, a big competitive grant. That's why they're complicated. But now I'm going to show you how you don't have to fool with the government. If you have a great idea, you could get a half a million dollars on the internet <laughs> just in a month and only put one, you know, one page. Basically, they don't ask for a credit check. They don't have anything. Now, here's a guy I, I interviewed that you're going to see in a second who got like $100,000 in four days. And this is just one web page that he filled out to get this. Now, nowhere near the complexity that you would have to do to get you know, like a, a $100,000, $200,000, you know, from one of these small business innovative research grants. That's why, you know, if you have an idea, you know, you know, particularly an inventive idea. Look to see how could you, how you could use internet sources of funding. It's a lot easier, a lot faster. In four days, you got the money. <laughs> In the government programs, it'll take you weeks, months, maybe. You know, to find out. And that's why it's a, so. Then, if you fail on the internet, then you could go on that. So that's why this this is really revolutionizing all kinds of money that's available for you to do things, do important things too. And see, because there it takes no money. It takes time, sure, to develop the idea and whatever. And the fellow you're going to interview, that's why he spent a bunch of time on this, but not a whole lot of cash. But it's time. See, and, and that's what you have to do. And the good ideas do take time. You just go, oh, I have a great idea. Yeah, maybe you get hit by lightning <laughs> and it does turn out to be a fantastic idea. And then I'll put you in one of my infomercials <laughs> because then you can say, yeah, I just thought of this in five weeks. I did, you know, I got, became a millionaire. Yeah, and that certainly happens to some people. Most of us are going to have to work at it. And, and it's really a thought process more and thinking it through and getting advice and help. And that kind of help is all available for free. You don't have to pay for that. You know, a lot of people think you do, but you don't. You know, we've done seminars and videos in the past that show you don't have to do that. So watch this fella, how he has a great idea too. I mean, I want one of these things. It's a way to get around the city, a way to get to the bus stop or whatever, a little portable. It's almost like a Segway, but, but it's not. It's a fraction of the cost because there's no motor. It's just a little pedal power. And it's a terrific thing to, <laughs> to use and to know about because this is how we're going to be traveling, particularly in the city. So watch this. Well, Jonas Eliason, man with, and your website is me-mover.com, where you could go Yay. see the, <laughs> the neatest vehicle that gets you around any city or any country or anything in the world, it seems. That's better than a bicycle, man. It's cheaper than a Segway, but acts almost like a Segway, doesn't it? You know? and, and it's an exercise machine, but it doesn't pound your bones or anything like that, too. So it's just a delightful thing that the whole world needs so we can get around and out of cars and stay in shape and 
everything. And it's coming out of exactly. one guy in Denmark. So how'd you get this, to this idea? Well, it's a, it's a bit of a long story, but I was living in Stockholm a couple of years ago. I think I've heard and it I before. Used, yeah. What? I think I heard the story before. No, I'm teasing you. <laughs> it was an inside joke because we've done this three times because of my incompetence running my computer. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go That's ahead. no problem. Anyway, I'm going to tell you again. Is that okay? Yes, definitely. Okay. I was, I was, I was living in Stockholm many years uh, ago and I was using the inlines quite a lot of times uh -huh. to get to and from the, the train. The, the metro inlines, and so what is that? A bus or something? Oh no, inlines. It's uh, sorry, it's uh, roller skates. Oh roller skates. Oh inline roller skating. Oh, I see. Yeah. Wonderful. So, so 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 basically, I just needed a, a far better inlines yeah. or roller skates that were safer and that were faster yeah. and I can use them all the same time, mm -hmm. and it should be easy to yeah. use. So from that kind of start, I started thinking, using that for a lot of years when I couldn't sleep, I was thinking of this machine. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, in 2008, I decided, well, let's do this. And I thought I was going to use maybe two years to develop and uh, produce it, and it took some more years. It was in 2008, and we have this, now it's set in production, everything is ready, and now we say 2014. So it's almost it's, it's five and a half years, basically, from, from idea to have set up the production. But and what it does, which is really kind of a big surprise to us, because it did everything we wanted, I wanted it to do, transportation, right? Getting from A to B, it does that. But then it's fantastic fun too. It's such a surprise how fun it is to ride. It has this skiing-like <laughs> movement. And, um, and then it has uh, the exercise functionality. When you, when you ride on it, it's really good exercise. It's ergonomic. You train your core muscles, your stomach, your back, and your thighs and your gluteus at the same time. I sound like a TV commercial, but it's actually true. <laughs> to get an infomercial, <laughs> I know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, it, but, it, but so, so this was the machine, right? Yeah. And again, on top of this, when you merge this together, you also have this, this way of moving in the city, which is actually born from the city because you stand up, you have full control even at uh, still standing, and you can see above the traffic since you get 10 centimeters higher, you stand up. Ah. So, so it's very stable. And you can stop any time and step off without parking because it stands on its own. Uh, someone you meet on the street, the buying some groceries or whatsoever. So it, it has this transportation, exercise, fun, and it merges perfectly with the city or uh, the public the, 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 it's, it's really not works really well. Well, I think so, it's also a wonderful device for... So this is the story. Yeah, for two things, I think here we have a lot of retirement communities. I don't know if Denmark is the same, yeah. but everybody over 60 goes and live in this little village kind of thing. And, and they drive around in golf carts, which is stupid. You know, they ha they should have something like yours, you know, the Me Mover, because then they can start using some exercise and it's not pounding yeah. on their joints or anything. And it probably even gets them faster than even a golf yeah. cart would if they want, because it's more convenient. You know, and, and it, I it's safer too. It's no motor. It will yeah. never run wild on you. It's, right. It's, and then, I, then I would say another thing because, I mean, as we do in Denmark, mm -hmm. we do have, uh, you have, you have this obesity issue yes. in the U.S. Yes. As, oh, we do in, as we do in Sweden. Yeah. And people really need to move. Yeah. Yeah. They really need to lift their asses, mm -hmm. if you have pardon me. Absolutely. That's and, the only way you do it. Yeah. No, I run, and what I, I run every that's day. That's part of our yeah. mission, to get people moving. Mm -hmm. And then the second is, again, to get them engaged in the city. Because when you step out of the golf cart, or the car for that sake, right. you're open. Yeah. You're social. Right. That's, that's an important part of our mission. But also, I see it as, I mean, I could throw in the trunk of the car, go out in the country, and yeah. my wife and I could have both of these and travel because it's easy to talk, to stop, to do anything. You could travel a lot more distance and doing anything you want in the world and get there better, faster, cheaper, whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can bring your stuff. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's what we see in, 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 in Copenhagen. We have this, uh, uh, the first kind of, we have this test customer that we're using. And this is a sightseeing company, and that, that's exactly what they want. They oh, get sightseeing, yes. Yeah. And people that do not know how to bike or right. uh, to be anything, and they can get up on the Mimur, they learn it slowly, it takes a couple of minutes, then they start moving around in the city, completely safe, they can talk, they can stop. Right. Well, you talked and about that. It's we, such a good way. It's right. like walking, but just faster. We have, uh, you know, in, we have sightseeing people here that use segways. Uh -huh. And a good yep. friend of mine was on one of these sightseeing tours, 
and wound up in the hospital on the Segway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, these, these things are a little dangerous here, they can be, yep. And that's why it seems like you would eliminate all those kinds of issues, you know, with yours, besides the price, you know, it's a one-tenth of the cost or whatever. <laughs> but, but there's no, yeah, I mean, which is the most important thing, but it, it, it's less, because it's like a tricycle with pedals that you stand on, right? So it's that kind of balance. And uh, gosh, if you're a skier too, you want to, you know, yeah. develop those muscles, that seems the best. You actually use the same, you can see that because as I said, it takes a couple of minutes to learn. Right. It's a completely new vehicle. Doesn't help you if you bike before. But on the other hand, uh, if you cannot bike, then that's no hindrance either. Right. But the thing is that the people that we see that just can jump on the jump on the me mover and just run like this <laughs> directly. <laughs> it's skiers, basically. Yeah. Alpine skiers that can be because you need the same muscles. Ah, they know what that is. Yeah. And I think that developing core, I mean that seems to be what we're finding out, you know, is that that's the most important thing in our, um, you know, staying fit is, is that co those core muscles. And that's why you have an easy, fun way to develop that is wonderful. But I think the best part of, you know, your uh, me mover is, man, you got a hundred thousand dollars in four days <laughs> raising money for this thing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and it's, it's, it's great. It's fantastic. Yeah. It's really great. And, and in a couple more days, you're already up to $150,000, $60,000. It's just incredible. I mean, that, and that just proves, I mean, to me, you know, the, the acceptance of this, the, the need for this, the, you know, how important it is, and, uh, and the rest Another of it. The thing is, we have, we, we have customers on all the continents. Oh, really? Right. <laughs> so it's, it's like it's like we have so it's this small community that picks it up. We have in uh, Hong Kong, we have in Japan, wow. Australia, in South Africa, wow. and you know it's, it's Every quite kind amazing. How it's You're going to have to make snow tires for this. <laughs> yeah, we, we have a guy. There is a buyer in Vladivostok in the north North Russia. <laughs> so some snow tires, maybe some skis too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a, so you're on Kickstarter now, and people actually go to Kickstarter now while you're still there because it's probably going to be more expensive, you know, once you get off Kickstarter, you know, and so yeah. it's important to have So that. hurry. Right, hurry. <laughs> <laughs> and the way to find it is go to me-mover.com, right? And that's where you get it all and find out about it. Even if Kickstarter's over, watch the video. That's the important thing is watch the video of this thing. It's fun. And it's a classy video you guys done. And uh, I'm so Thank glad. You. Yeah. Oh, you're a great you know, fella to come back and do this after I screwed it up. So <laughs> no problem. thank you so much. Thank you and much. Good luck to you and say hello to your boy. <laughs> Don't you have a daughter? Really do you have a daughter too or not? Just the son. I have a daughter. I have a son and I have a dog and a wife. So I see. <laughs> <laughs> the whole package and now you got the hottest product in the world so that's great yeah yeah so do thank you so much okay. Jonas. take care of yourself give my best to the family take care all right bye now. thank you very much have a all great right. day okay so what's your idea huh you got an idea don't let that go to waste and, and if you're worried about and you know protecting your idea and things like that man just call your local 211 hotline and ask them for the small business innovative research of uh, i mean not the small business <laughs> the small business development center they'll show you how to protect your idea for almost nothing you know and so you don't get involved with lawyers and all this kind of stuff first uh before you know the idea is really going to be big and you still can protect yourself so that's 211 and ask for the small business development centers because they'll do the work for you for free I don't know, you ever see Star Trek where they'd be talking to each other, you know, millions of miles away with just a little thing the size of a quarter or something like that? Well, now here's a tinkerer you know, who invented something for us. 
to use like that. You just put a little button here, you know, and you could call, hey, do I have any messages? And you get your messages, or you call somebody, or whatever, and the thing is like a size of a quarter, so you're not even carrying it around anywhere. You know? and, and, and actually, it's an un unbelievable price, you know, that you wouldn't believe, you know, you think of thousands of dollars, or whatever. it's like a hundred bucks or something like this. You got that kind of communicator, you know, that you could wear uh, on your t-shirt, or, or suit packet, or whatever, or, or a lot of people are using them in companies now. Now, you know, just on their dog tags or whatever they wear. You know, when you have a company ID that you have to wear around your neck. <laughs> it sounds dreadful to me, <laughs> but it's cool. And, and another thing about this interview coming up is that how this guy, you know, he, he got like over twenty thousand dollars for his idea, you know, uh, on the internet, you know, to help develop this. But he also got distributors, people, businesses. Hey, I need one of these for all my employees. You know. So that's what I mean, when you do something like this on the internet, you not only get customers, you get group sales or people who want to sell your stuff to other people or, or companies that want to have everybody in their, you know, in, in their office have one of these things. You know? So that's what's neat about using the internet like this uh, to, to do things, because it costs next to nothing. I mean, maybe if he spent a hundred bucks or so putting up the website would have been a lot, you know, and, and he got tens of thousands of dollars. And, and somebody was telling me is buying like $5,000, 5,000 of these things a month. So that's, a, that's worth a heck of a lot more than $20,000 and it'll be every month. So that's what's so neat about, you know, letting people know. If people don't know you have a good idea, <laughs> Who cares? I, mean, I used to think that I used to spend 90% of my creativity trying to tell people about my idea versus doing the idea. So that's what it takes in this kind of society with so much information and uh, ways to get the messages out. You have to work at it and it takes creativity. So watch this interview. Well, Charles Crimstock of, and it's Combridge.net. And you're bringing Star Trek to the average person on the street, aren't you? <laughs> I am, I am. Well, well, show us this gadget. You just, it's wearable technology. It's Star trek -y, yeah? What does it look like? There it is. That's it. Wow. It's, it's very thin. Uh-huh. Uh, powered on is one click. That's it? Ah. So it goes on your clothes like that? Goes on your clothes, and it can be driving or doing anything. And how do you? How does it work? It's free. Um, you can, you can put it uh, in your car. Uh, use it in your car, of course. Uh huh. And access Siri and Google now, all hands free. Wow! So show us an example. How does it work? How do you do this? Okay. You just touch it. What time is it? But, and you can check your messages like this too? And you can check messages. Yeah, like? Check messages. There are no messages. Ah, so That's you're not an important guy. That's great. Huh? <laughs> Well, that's not, I love to be out there and I'll always love hearing it. Oh, no new messages. But now I just tap this thing and, and, and it's good. And, and you say that you can also, like, you never lose your phone because this is really part of your phone. It's a Bluetooth, right? That's right. hooked up. When you pair it once to your phone, uh -huh. once it's paired, then uh, it's just automatically connected every time you turn mm -hmm. it on. And one, one thing that you'll notice is it, it'll totally change the experience you have with your smartphone mm -hmm. because you, you really uh, don't have to constantly look down at your phone to interact with it. And that's, that's really the beauty of it. It, it gives, gives you the freedom of your hands back. Yeah. And your head, instead of you know, looking at your feet all day and your phone, you know. <laughs> That's why you walk down the street, everybody's you see bald heads, you know. <laughs> and, and you get that out of the way. But more importantly, the applications are, are just tremendous. I mean, you know, uh, you have it. You can't. You, you, it's a way not to lose your phone because that's cooked in your phone. If it's here, you walk away from your phone at lunch, and it's going to tell you, "Hey, dummy, you forgot your phone, right?" Right. It's actually I can demonstrate that for you if you'd like. Yeah. Um, the, actually, found out that if you use a martini shaker, uh, <laughs> it it breaks the signal. To oh, you. I see. So when I do that, 
You're gonna hear it just one second. Warning, your phone is out of range. Wow! <laughs> and, and so this is you. This works now with iPhones or or with Androids or almost any kind of it, phone, right? It actually, it actually can work with any Bluetooth. Your phone is out of range. Now it's gonna ah, be, I see. So you recommend. found it. You dummy. <laughs> so it can actually work with any Bluetooth capable phone. Uh huh. Um, but we are we're only going to have apps for the iPhone and for the Android. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to use it as a speaker phone on an on a an older phone, I um, see. Right. Then, then you can still use it just as a speaker phone, but you mm -hmm. won't have the voice control capability. Unless you have Siri or Google now. I see. Well, this is where we come to it. And now we have technology like you do, you know, the, the com badge, you know, that we don't have to program anything. We just have this little gadget and do it and talk and don't have to write in code and bits and ones or exactly. uh, Fortran or anything. And, and, and it's going to make life so much easier like you are on your Sears. You know, you wake up in the middle of the day and night, you say, because of things that you know have to be, you know, be helpful to people, and you're sharing it with us, and, and the people can know about it by go to combadge, that's C-O-M-M-B-A-D-G-E dot net, to find out about the Kickstarter campaign, or if it gets over by the time you get there, but don't wait. And actually, you got to get there because you want to see this video on your page, man. It really shows exactly how this thing works. I mean, right. you you know the the people uh that are in the video or uh, it's just a well done video i mean you know for Thank a gadget you. it, it well, and that's because we, we if you think about the future of of input to a computer or to a mobile device yeah. is voice absolutely and that is the future that's so, where it's going yeah so combat really is going to be right. riding that wave of right. Intelligent assistance, and not only are you going to save lives from, you know, getting people help when they need it and all this other stuff because of the functions of uh, you know combat, but you're going to save lives of people who are walking in traffic looking at their phones like this now. <laughs> and that's true too. That is true too. So you're a lifesaver, Charles. Uh, thanks for being there. And uh, people want to know more about it or get involved in the Kickstarters, get one. You know, at a real deal and be the one, the first one at c o m m b a d g e dot com. Dot net. Dot net. Oh, oh God, say all that. I got to say that in four trip. You can go to Kickstarter and and um, search Combat. Combat. C o m m b a d g e. Great. Um, but it's great being on your show. I thank you very much. Well, thank you, Charles. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet a boy from Philly making good, man. <laughs> <laughs> Thank great. you so much. All right. Take, take care. care. Okay, you're going to get one? <laughs> They're pretty cheap and it looks pretty fun. <laughs> but more importantly, if you have an idea, so you don't have to have the whole idea completed. You know, you just have to have a, a mock up or something like that of what it's going to do. And you get one of those made, you know, with 3D printers and things like that. So that's easy to do nowadays. You don't have to have a million done in, in China in order to show people. You just have to have one. And that doesn't take a whole lot of money. So start working on your idea. When I was 17, I used to love the snow. You know, because I knew that I could get my snow shovel and go out or around the neighborhood and make a whole bunch of money <laughs> shoveling sidewalks and driveways and stuff like that. That was the only way a young kid could make money usually in those days. Now, I want to introduce you to a 17-year-old <laughs> that I just interviewed. This guy at 17 years old is he was able to get $20,000 in five days on the internet. I'm sure this kid doesn't know one end from a shovel from another. <laughs> but that's what's going on nowadays, and the kids know that, the young people. And that's why us old people have to know how to use this technology too. And, and actually, his idea is pretty cool. I mean, he loves music. That's what you love at 17, 16, or whatever it is. Yeah. So he's designed, so God, he wants to build this platform, this uh, computer platform with 20 million songs on it. And so on your phone, then you can go anywhere and, and all your buddies on the same phone can have access to all the songs. You know what each other like. And so when you're in a car together, you just 
you know, put on one of your buddies and, and they'll find out who likes what kind of songs and play that song, <laughs> song as a background in your life. <laughs> it's amazing. This is what people want. And, and obviously, because he, he's been uh, raising money for this on the internet, getting free money to do this project, you know, and he's 17 years old, so he obviously doesn't have even a credit rating to do this, and he's still getting the money. You know, and he's almost, he's got two more weeks and he's like a thousand bucks away from $40,000 at this point. He's going to make his money. He's going to go on and figure out the rest of this. More importantly, he has hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people that want this already. And he found out how to do that by the internet. And it costs him next to nothing. So if a kid with no money is able to do this on the internet, you know, and get $20,000 in two days and $40,000, you know, for a, um, you know, like a whole month, uh, to do this project, now he has the funds to do this project and work on it. You know, God, I mean, it's just amazing. From, and the money's from strangers, more or less, you know, just on the internet. And so it's a tool that we all have to use to get by in our society now because it, it, it's very important. Where else? I mean, when I grew up, there's nowhere. Where the heck would I have gotten $20,000? Or at the time, what was that equal to $3,000 or whatever? I mean, that was beyond. I could buy a brand new car at <laughs> $3,000 at that kind of uh, money. And that's why it's all about learning the tools and to see how they're relevant to you in what you want to do with your life. Because young people, they're using it to do what they want to do in their life. So you can too. Watch this. Well, Max Snow, man, <laughs> I don't know. You're going to teach the world, you know, how to be music lovers. And you're going to become the music lover's music lover. <laughs> <laughs> and you're gonna be the only. Well, but what are you like? Seventeen, eighteen, or something like that? Uh, yes, eighteen. Eighteen. Well, eighteen years old. You know, you got investors. You're raising money on the internet, and you're gonna change the music industry. And, and don't it, hope. <laughs> well, everybody hopes, and if you don't have hope, nothing's gonna happen. And, and that's why it's great for you guys. I mean, your partner, uh, Fred Kim, and you are are just, you know, just going to shake up the world with music and make it more profitable for people producing music, make it easier to listen to music. The best thing uh, that what you explain, what you do, that I could now on my phone have the music as the backtrack of my whole life. I go to parties where it's all the same music and everything. It's just terrific. Now, what is it called again? T tell us. Backtrack. So this is an app on the phone that will do what? Now, what, what's it going to do? So Backtrack is really an app that could do anything you want it to do. Ah. What we do is we take 20 million songs, all of the songs in the world, essentially. And we <laughs> That's modest. On, yeah, yeah. Uh, and we put them in either a radio format where uh -huh. you could listen to any genre in the world with all of the music or... You could choose from them and make your own playlists. Ah. But what really makes us original and unique is the fact that it's the social interactivity and the social experience that you could take with the music. Mm -hmm. So essentially, if there's a song that, let's say, you want to share with me that you just discovered, it's simple. Two clicks of a button, and it's mine. You oh. send it. So if we're both on backtrack, it, I just go poop, and you got it, and I don't have to go through Facebook or emails and all that kind of stuff. Exactly. Wow. Huh. So you, could be, you don't have to be any, you don't have to be together. You could be any place. Ah. So like an ex-girlfriend, you could say, you know, a song that says, I hate you now or something, and you just say. <laughs> exactly. It, it meshes with music discovery and uh -huh. your life discoveries. Uh -huh. um, but our, also, our last feature is Rave Track. Which basically, um. when you're in, let's say, a car or a dinner party, mm -hmm. or if you're at a party, what it does is it analyzes everybody's music taste, uh. if you're a Backtrack user, through internet, Wi-Fi, or Bluetooth, mm -hmm. and it plays the music that everybody wants to hear. So, in other words, your app on one phone is able to go through my whole party, if I have 20 people here, check what they like the most... And then, you know, I put my phone in the speakers and it's playing music that everybody likes. And I don't have to pull everybody or worry about it. Or we all find out we're all closet country fans. <laughs> exactly. It finds the commonalities and the similarities shared by everybody and it plays those genres. Wow. 
I mean, that, <laughs> so it really is, it is a cross between, you know, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, have, having you know, a CD or, or having uh, Pandora. Or, and it's more than that, because I guess that's that social thing. It's connecting people together with the music. And, and what do you have in common without having to fill out a form <laughs> exactly, <laughs> or anything like that? But it's more because we really care about the artists and the people uh -huh. that make the music. And you'll see a lot of companies saying that they're beneficial for the artists. They'll mm -hmm. make it more profitable for them. Yeah. We understand that royalty rates are a controversial issue today and tomorrow. But what we want to do is, besides from just paying a higher royalty rate, right. we want to, which goes with our inherent theme of communication and right. our interactivity, we want to spread and help these artists, independent and established, in more than one way. We want to connect them with other artists for mm. potential collaborations, as mm. well as industry members such as I producers see. or managers. So you're going to be a platform not only for music lovers and listeners, but also for music makers, producers, agents, <laughs> distributors, everybody to work together and collaborate and, and to make things bigger than individuals. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. We call it the circle of life. We ah. have the audience. We mm -hmm. provide the audience to the music industry. Mm -hmm. Then the industry, through collaborations, mm -hmm. and we hope to provide our audience mm -hmm. with early song releases and interactive mm -hmm. interviews with their favorite mm -hmm. artists, where, for instance, yeah. you could ask your favorite artist a question. Ah, any question I see. Well. Wow. And, could, and you know, there's a very high chance that we could pick your question. Right. <laughs> because you'll pull it on the <laughs> on the exactly. wave feature. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And uh -huh. then what we do is we take those early song releases that the music industry has finally made uh -huh. that we were we we were able to facilitate, and then we take that and we provide it back to the audience. Wow. So I mean, if I'm a music lover, I like music or I think I like music, but it seems like you're you're the future of the music industry. I mean, this is going to be well, why be you know like a record stores are going right, and so maybe iTunes is going to go now because we're going to have you. <laughs> why well, would I want to? Do? We strongly believe that it would be more beneficial to you as a consumer to instead of buying each individual song, right? It's more it's better to buy in a subscription. Where you can mm -hmm. get for right. seven dollars a month twenty million mm -hmm. songs, mm -hmm. rather than for seven dollars get seven songs. So that's why on Kickstarter now you're raising money to 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 make this happen, and, and you're halfway there almost in five days. <laughs> so I think you're thinking about going to college next year. You may have to postpone that so you can count on this money and. <laughs> <laughs> and make this venture happen and that the money then it seems like is to be able to finish the production and, and everybody signs up now I guess is going to get a bargain because when it goes full time it'll be more expensive and, and you get in on the ground floor this way right we are discounting everything right that's what I mean that's what I mean. so you, you get a it's a bargain not only be the first one to have it but you'll be the, you'll have it at a bargain price right? I'm glad you mentioned because we actually one of our two of our rewards are we are are selling the alpha test and beta test. Ah. So basically what that means is for the alpha test, you will actually be the first person to oh. use the app. I see. Wow. And, uh, yeah, you'll be in a select group of people that have been chosen yeah. for buying it. And that would be great because the buddy, the other people that are on the service are real special too and be a great people, <laughs> a fan base to be part of right away. Exactly. But All the cool kids are first. <laughs> but most importantly, you can influence our development. Ah, I see. And that's what it's for. It's for you to give feedback and things like that, which is great. Well, that's terrific. Max, I don't think you have much to worry about in life. If it's 17, 18 year old, you're doing all this now. And, and both you and Fred are, are also have acceptances into great colleges. And, uh, but more importantly, doing work like this to, to really make changes in life is important. And, and to find you, it's B Track. So the letter B T R A C K M U S I C dot com is where you go to find out about this stuff and kick in a few bucks and you'll be one of the first ones to be that part of the change of the music industry. And we need that, man, because music is the most important thing in life. I think it, it's, it's everything that I, I think about being human is expressed in music. So thank you for doing this, Max. Thank you for having me. Uh, you bet. Good luck. <laughs> thank you.